this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to deal with two common problems with raw video footage. The first one is when your horizontal isn't right, and you can see that very clearly in the first frames of this video clip. We'll show you how to correct that. The second thing is when the colors are dull. This is a fall scene, but it really doesn't pop. There could be a, a a bit more color, a bit more vibrancy to it. We're going to show you several tools you can use to adjust that. So let's start out with the horizontal issue. When I play the video, you see that even though the camera thought it was filming on the horizontal, it really doesn't look like it is, at least in that relationship to what we see here. It's going to back up here, and the farther back you get, the more it might look acceptable, but we don't even want the close-up video shot to look crooked. So let's fix that. So I'm going to stop the video and then highlight it and then click on the edit button above the timeline. Now we have some tools here. I want to be on the video option and the new interface and I want to be on the tools option as well. Now we're going to click down to the crop and rotate. When we click there it will open up a new screen called crop and rotate. And I find if I want to make some very small adjustments to this and not massive ones, I like to use the numbers over here. So if I click on the word rotate and the number button, I see up and down arrows. I'm going to use a down arrow and adjust it just slightly. If I click it once, it's one degree, two degrees. That could work. Let me try three. I like three better. So I'm a minus three and it looks rock solid level but I have some of the images out of frame. How do I fix that? You just take the corners and you draw the corners in. We're going to lose a bit of content, but not enough to matter. And I'll take the opposite corner and draw that in. And now that will look pretty good. I'm going to click on OK. We're not going to keyframe this at all. And it'll pop up. And now when I play the video, we see that it looks pretty horizontal, so I fixed that problem. Now let's deal with the color problem. There are three approaches we're going to look at in quickly modifying color. So I'm going to highlight the clip again, and we're going to click back on Edit. This time we're going to click under Video. We're going to click on Color. Let's look at a couple options we have here when it comes to color. I'm going to widen this so we can see our in entire sliders here. A couple things that I might like to do. One thing I like to look at often is sharpness. That's my bottom color control. And I will slide this a little bit to the right. It doesn't have to go far. And it will sharpen up the appearance of the wood on the bridge quite a bit. That looks good. A second thing I could do is I could work on exposure. But we have to be careful so we don't blow things out. If I drag it this way, we have a blown out scene. So I generally don't do too much with exposure. We can uh, affect the brightness a little bit. And maybe just a little touch on that might help. We can also do a little bit on saturation and vibrancy. If I turn that up just a bit. Now if we turn it all the way, we get very unrealistic ones. So again, I would be very small with any saturation adjustments. Uh, I'm just going to inch it up a little bit. But vibrancy is going to turn my water bluer. So I like that one. So you can use these sliders to see what the difference will be. If you want to compare in a split preview, you click the box here. And we have the before and after. We have the old image on the left, the modified image on the right. And when you look at the clarity of the wood on the bridge and a little bit of the colors, it makes a big difference. So that's what we can do on that one. So I'm going to turn off the comparison. Let's look at a different tool we could use. So I'm going to close the window, and I'm going to go to my effects room. When I have, I have in the effects room in the new interface a subcategory called filters and LUTs. Let's click on that. And we have some areas that are LUTs and some areas that are filters. So what I'm going to do is click on my nature subcategory and see what I have here. I have a whole bunch of LUTs, and I have these other elements here that look different. They have this balloon picture on it. These are filters. That's why they look different. So if I want to just do a filter, I have a filter here called Harvest Farm. Watch what happens when I click on that. Quite a bit of difference, isn't there? That is just using a single filter. 
I can adjust the degree of the filter, but I can adjust whether I use it or not. And if I click on the eye below here, I see, let's drag it down and drop it in the track. That will make it active. And then if I click on the eye here, I can see that I have all of these active. I have a color adjustment, I have a crop and rotate, and I have a filter. If I want to remove the filter, I click down here, and I, can, I can't affect the degree of it, but I can just turn it off, and I can actually uh, make it go away completely. So now if I click on the eye again, I don't have a filter control. The other option I have, and I can stack all these if I want, is I have LUTs. Let's try a LUT on top of my other edits that I've done. We should have some that are kind of fallish here. Let's see what I can find. Here's Outdoor Warm. Let's click on that. Uh, that could work. It's very, very dense. Let's try another one. Let's try four. A little less, a little more subtle. Let's try one. Okay. And I also have some that are landscape. Here's landscape warm. And another one here. Let's try this one, this landscape warm too. I'll click on that. I'll drag it down. Apply it to my video clip. But I want to modify it just a bit. So I'm going to click on the eye again. And click on my landscape warm effect, which is a LUT in this case. Now, when I have a LUT, I have a strength value. So I can turn it all the way down, which means it's like it's not applied at all. And then I can gradually increase it until I get what I think is a pretty good mix. And that's probably about where I, where I would be happy with that particular one. So we'll close it out and go back to our media room. And when we look at this and play this, I think I have a significantly better end result than I did before by just using a couple of the options I have available, both to straighten and enhance the pop of color in my video in CyberLink PowerDirector. Mm -hmm.